that's what we've missed in wrestling for yeah. a very long time. It's been 20 years, man, since we've had anything other than the WWE. And, um, and WWE has always been guilty of, unless somebody's breathing down their, their necks like WCW was at one point, they won't change. Vince would have never gone um, that route that he did during the Attitude Era if he didn't have to. And that ended up being some of the best television ever with Rock and Austin and all that DX, all that great stuff. He would have never done that if he didn't have to. So maybe now with somebody else pushing that, uh, you know, it'll spark Vince to, to have to do stuff again. And I think he will at one point, it, you know, it'll get down to that. So we have, we have a lot of amazing wrestling, you know, to look forward to in the next five years. Yeah. I hope, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it's even a, it's just crazy to me, you know, like hearing it from somebody that, was a big part of that era, you know, to now being on my channel and everything. It's just, it still feels like a dream. And, you know, with everything that's gone on, how do you, um, do you feel like, you know, when you left, to go back, when you left WWE to work with uh, Paul Heyman, did you feel, did you feel free? Did oh you yeah, feel like like a weight. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it w it was scary at first, yeah. um, to be honest. But once I got used to it, and Paul was, uh, you know, I didn't know much about Paul at the time, and he was just such a breath of fresh air because he would get he would tell you things like he'd give you the big picture of what he thought I should be or should do. He'd give me ideas, but then he'd step aside and let me create let me come up with my own concepts and stuff like, you know, he, he did participate in it. And a lot of it was his idea, but then he'd step back. He didn't micromanage. And what that allows the performer to do is just to, you know, stay within your lane. Like there's a lot of things I do good, but there's a lot of things I do bad, mm -hmm. you know? So I just always tried to accent the good and don't do the stuff I'm not very good at. And WWE, they don't do that. They just, they'll straight up tell you, this is what you got to do, which leads to, you being in an uncomfortable situation and perhaps putting out a shitty product, mm -hmm. you know? So it was just very, very refreshing to have that kind of creative control, you know? Yeah, I bet, you know, just, just by watching it back then to seeing how different ECW was from WWF, um, you, you can kind of see it, you know, I guess, I guess now looking back at it, you can kind of see it that it was a, a totally different, uh, uh work ethic you know yeah because it looked and, like and we were we were building towards something too it was like um we all had an interest in the company doing great so nobody was phoning it in you know because we knew especially the top guys in ecw we knew if the company was going to do good we were all going to do good so it benefited us to go out there and do a hundred percent every night we didn't take any nights off because we needed to bring those fans back all the time and grow our audience. Whereas in WWE, they ran you so much. We were so tired all the time. It's like, you know, if we're in a small town and the crowd ain't great, it's like, let's not, we're not doing shit tonight. You know, like we'll go out there and do nothing. We'll grab a hold or something, you know? And in ECW, we never did that because we felt uh, that it was our best interest. Even if the crowd was down, mm -hmm. To, to work harder to bring, you know, so people will talk about it and not want to miss it. You know what I mean? To grow the audience. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's true. And, you know, by talking about that, would you, uh, would you have changed um, anything and start over if you, uh, you know, back then, like, instead, if you can go back, would you change anything or would you, the same thing, you would just go back down that road? I wouldn't change anything in ECW. No, no. that was probably as, as perfect as I would have wanted it to be for, for myself. Um, I would have changed some things in the future, like when I went to WWE with X Factor and stuff like that. But um, in ECW, I would not have, no. To bring up X Factor, that's one thing I forgot to bring up uh when our first interview um how was that w working with x factor and x Pac and uh was it prince albert right 
Yeah. And how was that? How did that a gimmick come about, basically? Um, I mean, Sean and I were friends from the old days, you know, from when I was there before. We used to travel and stuff, uh, me, him, and Scott Hall. Um, so, you know, it was cool. I don't know whose idea it was, but we were both very into it. And, um, you know, if I went in as a singles wrestler, I would have had a very hard time because Rock was still there. Austin was still there. You know, it was a different, they had everybody still. Mick Foley was there. Hunter was there. So uh, it was just a different thing. But to come in as a tag team, uh, I felt we could have been a great heel tag team because we had the Dudleys, which we worked a program with in the beginning when I first uh, started tagging. They had the Hardys, Edge and Christian, which we all, I worked with all of those guys with X Factor. The problem happened when um, things were going good for X Factor. Uh, well, not great, but they were going okay. We were winning matches. And then um, I think after we beat the APA, um, we got news that uh, Vince was buying WCW and then they were going to put me in the Alliance. So that's when they broke up X Factor because there was, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think Pac had to go get neck surgery or something like that. So, you know, it just got into all that, all that business shit just got in the way of the tag team, unfortunately. Wow. You feel like yeah. it would have been better if... I'm t yeah. Oh, I thought we could have been tag team champions for sure. Yeah. I know they had talked about it at one point. So, you know, we would have been a perfect little, like a heel tag team, like, you know, like punk heels to, you know what I mean? To, to be those dicks and then like barely win every match, you know, like a, a good heel tag team, like cheat to win with Albert. That was the point of having him there. He was supposed to like help us win and shit, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's crazy to end to even see where his career went after that. Yeah. And being a top dog in New Japan. Yeah. Holding the belts and it's it's crazy. And this question is from my brother. He said, um, the whole mass transit event in ECW, uh, how did were you there for it and how did you feel about that? I wasn't there for it. That was uh, a couple of months before I uh, I came to ECW. I mean, it was, I, I think it was, Paul, I, I hear that Paul kind of egged New Jack on because Heyman knew what he was doing. Like, I think Paul wanted to put him in there with, uh, put New, or New Jack in there with this kid to kind of, to, to to for the fans to see something like because Heyman knew Jack was just gonna fuck him up. Bottom line, you know what I mean. If you know New Jack and you know that like this kid was inexperienced, he was not a good. He had no reputation of being a pro. So Heyman knew that that Jack was gonna go out there and just eat him up. So I think uh, Paul probably uh, you know kind of enticed him, and I think New Jack just took it too far. You know what I mean? Because nobody should have that done. I don't care who you are. No, that shouldn't be done to anybody. So I think it just got, uh, it was one of those things that Heyman tried to create, but got carried away. So, you know, the new Jack kind of took all the heat for it, but you know, it was kind of fucked up to be honest. You know? Uh, did you still hear about it as of this month's out when you, uh, when you went to ECW and everything, did you, was that like the talk everything? It wasn't so much No, believe it or not. <laughs> you didn't hear much about it. No. I, I never really heard much about it and it's surprisingly so because I think it was one of those things that you know you people didn't want to talk about because you know you didn't want any shit to get out there I you know what I mean because ECW was very good at keeping secrets so like if they didn't want somebody to know they just wouldn't talk about it so yeah it was kind of kept quiet and especially since it was like a legal thing at the time yeah. as well that that was crazy he is you know, after our first interview, he was just like, hey, did you ask me about the mass transit? And I'm like, no, I forgot. <laughs> I didn't even like that question didn't even pop in my head. You know, I was yeah. I was just like getting all the questions together. You know, I told him <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and another question from him, he says, oh, do you have, you know, a favorite uh, sitcom? Favorite sitcom? Not really, no. I don't watch a lot of TV. 
No. I don't watch a lot of TV. No. I watch a lot of movies and stuff, but not a lot of TV. You know what? One, st- one you could call it a sitcom, I guess. I like Lucifer on Netflix. Lu- uh, Lucifer, yeah, that's a good show. Yeah, that that's probably all I watched. You know, I'm not into like a lot of the newer stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, hell yeah, for sure. And um, he says, you know, if you could pick any faction, you know, um, to be in, you know, who, um, what would it be? Uh, any faction, I'd probably want to be in the Four Horsemen. Yeah, that would have probably been the best. Hell yeah, dude! Like that's what kind of made me want to get into wrestling was the Four Horsemen. You know, the original, like you know, Oli, Arn, Tully, and Rick. You know, that was the shit. I bet. So yeah, definitely the Horsemen. Yeah, like the Horsemen, just the theme song and the hype that they had at that at that time. And those years. they were just yeah they were just so good and nobody like nobody did it like that at the time you know they were rev- like every every one of them had like uh, you know Arn had the tag belts Tully had the TV belt Flair had the uh, the heavyweight belt and Arn would like switch tag partners if it wasn't like you know sometimes it would be Tully and Arn but then you know then uh, Barry Windham came in and, and just all the combinations of them were were really cool so I and they were like the best yeah you know what I mean like. They talked shit and they proved it, you know. So that was the fun part. And they dressed. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. They always dressed, and I'm like, damn, dude. Again, who only knows on how much they were making back then? On the I don't know, time. but they they had to be making good money, real good money, at least half a million a year a piece, I think. I would imagine. That's what you I know. Was. I know Flair was probably making more than that, but I know yeah. those guys are definitely getting paid. Hell yeah. And let's talk about that, um, you know, what everyone seems to be talking about now. And for, for some odd reason, this one was never, it never was brought in my head. Like I may be probably, I probably heard about it in the past, but when it came to coercion again, uh, the plane ride from hell. Yeah. How was that? Like, how did that go about? How did you, um, it was just, a spare of the moment, basically, on what happened there? Um, I mean, all I remember really from that, and, and you know, I get asked this a bit, um, we did a pay-per-view in London, England. It was like Insurrection or something. It was on a Saturday. Mm-hmm. And um, we flew home on a Sunday and because we had Raw on Monday in like New York. So uh, when we went to, to leave uh, London, there was like there was something wrong with the plane and then um then we couldn't take off like we were on the tarmac for seven hours before we even took off because london to new york is only five hour flight so in that seven hours like they kept bringing in liquor to kind of keep us happy like carts of liquor so before we even took off dude everybody like had gone through a ton of booze so everybody was fucked up not everybody that's a i shouldn't say there's never everybody but a lot of people were fucked up and i remember um that i took i took scott because we were hanging out a lot then and i took a razor and we sat because wwe took out a whole plane for us like you know what i mean that was a private plane so we sat in the front kind of like to you know just to get some rest you know because normally what we do is we take some sleeping pills get a couple beers or whatever and just go to sleep and uh, I picked the front because, you know, if you fall asleep, dude, they'll fuck with you sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, they'll just rib you. So uh, that's what I... All the way, are we going out tonight? All the way, I'ma chug the bottle, chug it all the way. Made it this far, 